Okay. So let's get started, yeah? And please feel free to share in the chat where you like to focus on if you're familiar with it. So monitoring and evaluation, that's what it's about today. And I have no idea if you have really started with that, but we know from our experience and what we've seen in paradigm is that it can be quite difficult because how do you know what to monitor and what to evaluate and how do you know then that you're reaching your impact and making a difference so that is what we talk about today and a framework which you can see here is a kind of map that helps you to understand how do you get from your inputs to reaching your objectives now for those of you who have seen it you may be familiar with this picture the framework includes six components we call them things you can evaluate such as input activities process learnings and changes and impacts the context and it comes with things that you can measure so for example one of the components is input and this is about the expectations the preparations the resources and representativeness of stakeholders so basically do we have the conditions in place to really have meaningful engagement activities. Now, things that you could measure is, for example, the time you have invested, the time the patient community has invested, but also the expectations that you had at the start or that industry uh, representatives had at the start. So we will show you and inspire you, hopefully, with things that you could measure. But the key thing is that you tailor this to your situation and context. So with your Wardis, and with the other patient communities, we have worked on making a tailored framework. So a tailored evaluation approach for their specific engagement efforts and in their context. So we are currently also working on a scientific publication and a plain language summary, for example, of the work we have done with uh, Eurordis. And Sefki can perhaps also um, share some more insights and Sally who is here and the Eurordis folks as well. The same is what we did with the EGG, with the HIV community and with the Alzheimer community. So that's how we tailored it. Today I will show you a bit more how you can tailor this framework. So basically there are four steps involved. So let's say you're new or you want to start tracking if you are making an impact for your community then the first step is to first discuss with each other what are you actually evaluating? What are our objectives? What do we hope to achieve? And also why would we then invest time and money in monitoring and evaluation? Like, would we like to learn something? Do we want to show something? So that's step one. Then you're gonna develop this roadmap. So so-called roadmap is that you show or visualize how do we actually reach those objectives? And then also, what do we need to then measure to see whether we are on track? Now, and then step three is to identify the methods. So how do we actually monitor or evaluate that? What do we need? And then the fourth step, most importantly, is to also establish a feedback loop. So really discuss what have we seen, what have we learned, and what are factors that may influence success. Now, we'll show you one example. Today, we have three examples we probably uh, we'll do two to have some more time for interaction. Um, but we have an example from the patient community and an example also from uh, a, an initiative led by a pharmaceutical company. And I will start with the example Richard, who is a program officer at the patient organization. So imagine you are part of a patient organization or you may be part of this and you are organizing community advisory board meetings. So you're bringing together researchers and industry partners and you want to discuss clinical trials. So that may be one of the initiatives that we have, uh, that's something that we have seen also in the Paradigm Consortium. Now, how do you then know you're making a difference? So that's what Richard wants to know. He wants to get guidance on how do I evaluate my engagement efforts and he also wants to see some examples of things that he could measure, things he could ask. So that is what he hopes to gain, uh, to, he wants to use as the framework for. And I will show you how we will do that. So first step is always to bring all the people you're working with together around the table. It can also be online, but at least to discuss a few things to see like, are we, uh, what is our approach and what and to together walk through those four steps. So I will just first go to step one. 
in this particular case, uh, everyone was asked, what do you hope to achieve? Now, one of the patients shared, for example, that they really wanted to see uh, improved access to clinical trials in all European countries. So that can be one of your objectives why you are involved in a patient engagement initiative. Now, one of the industry partners shared that they want to see that they are building trust with the patient community. So everyone on the table may have different objectives. So that's important to keep in mind. Also, when it comes to monitoring and evaluation. So some of them may really want to learn how we can improve our engagement practice. Uh, others may want to acquire uh, insights in, well, the input that we have provided is that maybe making a difference for medicines development. And everyone probably wants to know what's the value of engagement for all involved. So and then that roadmap that we were talking about. So step two is to visualize how you're gonna reach those objectives. So at the right here, you see the objectives, and then you're basically gonna walk backwards. See if we want to ensure that clinical trials collect information that is relevant to our patient community, then the trials really have to measure those outcomes that reflect the needs and experiences of the patient population. Now, then you, you need to, uh, the company needs to include patient relevant outcome measures in the research protocol. And to do so, they need to have understanding what are the outcomes that are really, that really matter to the patient community. Now to do that, they meet with patients and uh, during those patient advisory board meetings. And to ensure that the outcomes are relevant, you may need a diverse group of patients to ensure that a diverse perspective is included, but also a diverse group of industry representatives. So this is a very simple visualization. Now, the one that you may see in the framework paper, the, the, the tailored framework from your orders may look a bit more complex because you can do that for every objective. So if you have a lot of objectives, then it may be a bit more messy. And in practice, the road may not be as linear. So you may go back and forward. Huh? But the idea is that you discuss this to get a kind of consensus of what are we doing here and how do we reach that? And what are done things that are important to measure? Okay, so then there are a few other factors to take into account because when you are doing patient engagement, you're not doing that in isolation. You're part of a context of an environment and that may influence the success. So for example, one of the factors you may need to take into account is to the decision-making power that the people involved have but also whether the discussion is transparent and honest and all kind of other factors that may be out of your control. So those are important. Now, the framework helps you to understand what are the things that I could measure? What could I consider as impact? And then it guides you with example questions and methods that you could use. And so you can tailor it to your situation. I will briefly show you how the framework looks like in an online version and what we mean then with metrics and give you some inspiration, hopefully, of what you can measure. And I will do that in the online tool. Welcome to those who just joined. We started the presentation and I will just show you now a quick preview of the online version of the framework. So we are talking about Richard and there are multiple ways of using the framework. Either you can explore all the metrics that are 87 metrics and 15 context factors are quite a lot. So as a patient organization, we'll never be able to measure it at all. You will be busy with measurement without being able to spend time on other things. So ideally you, you select a set. Now to help you with that, we also have created some sample sets that you can use as a starting point. But Richard decides to really go over all the metrics and just check what people find most important to measure related to his initiative. So he's gonna explore on his own. And what you, if you take that direction, what you will then get from the framework is the different things you could measure, starting with input. So basically the conditions you need for meaningful patient engagement. And each of those uh, components comes with subcomponents, we call them. Other, so basically categories uh, of metrics. And metrics are the things that you could measure, for example, the diversity of patient representatives, like do we have a diverse group reflecting 
the po uh, patient population. I think this is also some of the things that was measured uh, sadly by the Duchenne community. So who do we need actually at the table to have a meaningful discussion? So there are also in, uh, in one of the other cases, we have also seen the importance of the diversity of staff. So those are also things that you could measure. Now the same, if you walk through the tool, you will see those different components also for activities and process. And that gives you an idea of the quality of your engagement uh, practice. So for example, you could measure whether the people find the meetings, in this case, advisory board meetings useful from the patient community perspective, but also from an industry perspective. And there are a lot of initiatives who are already measuring this. But you could also think about other things, so as the number and type of frequency of engagement activities, etc. So this is the way, the way is the tool is designed that you can select your own. So you can walk through it, learnings and changes, and select the metrics that you find most meaningful, and those should match with your objectives, of course. So if you look at impact of engagement, then we we have learned that everyone has a different idea of what impact means. And also impacts can be positive, but could also perhaps be negative for you as a person or for a patient community. So we should not forget about that. Mostly we talk about impacts related to research, which are the, the ones above. Is the research like the relevance, the, the ethics and inclusiveness, quality. But you could also think about impacts in other forms, for example, empowerment. We have learned that a lot of the metrics that the patient community found important is related to empowerment the feeling of making a difference, the feeling of make, being heard. For example, the Alzheimer community also mentioned that they hope that engagement will um, change the perspectives of researchers and reduce stigma. So those are other types of things that engagement could achieve. Also, uh, reputation and trust could be important. And if your goal is to make patient engagement the norm in society, so business as usual, then you may want to measure the embedding of patient engagement. So you may want to see how many trials have actually taken impact, uh, insights from patients into account. Where is it implemented? So you're going a bit more on a higher level to see what is our impact on a more societal uh, level. So there are a lot of things that you could measure. I've shown you just a few examples. And uh, lastly, I want to highlight that the framework also includes context factors. So things that are things that may influence success. And those can be facilitators, but could also be barriers. And some of them might be in your control, but some of them may be totally out of your control. So you can have a perfect designed engagement practice, having a perfect relationship, but still may see very little impact or the other way around. Now, one of the factors that may influence success is the length of the relationship. So for example, in the ETG community, uh, um, we have seen that it's a quite established relationship. They have been working together with pharmaceutical company for many years. So a lot of knowledge exchange have already been taken place. So there may not be new learnings or insights every advisory board meeting, but it doesn't mean that the relationship is not valuable. It can still grow. But it's important to take into account if you just look at learnings and changes, you may sometimes see one year little learn, uh, very few learnings and changes. But it doesn't mean that it's not valuable, but it's important to take into account. At the same time, you could may have you could see perhaps more long term impact. So if you had multiple advisory board meetings, you may see uh, impact. Uh, some of those impacts may take a while before they come visible. So the tool enables you then to create your own tailored, we call it a menu of metrics. Uh, and th this is a starting point for you for measurements. And I will now go back to the PowerPoint slides to show you a bit of those last uh, steps that you then take with your uh, partners. So we were at step two. So we developed this roadmap and we selected metrics. And then the next step, so this is basically the metrics that were that Richard and his group selected. And again, everyone may value different things. So some of the industry representatives wanted to measure trust. Well, some of the patient groups said, well, well, I'm really focused on access. I want to improve access. So I really want to, to measure the number of clinical trials changing in exclusion criteria. So this is their specific tailored map. 
then they have to look for what, how do we then measure that? What kind of methods can we use? So the, the framework provides also examples of possible methods and sample questions that we have gathered from, from you, from the patient community. So for example, surveys or questionnaires you have already developed. I know that your ward is, for example, measuring um, their community advisory board meeting. So we have learned and gathered information from them, but also from, uh, from the literature and from other initiatives. So this again can be used as a source of inspiration of what kind of questions could I ask and what kind of methods can I use? Is there one fits all set, one questionnaire? No, there isn't, too bad. You really have to develop this bit yourself. So you can pick and choose, but then your menu has to be tailored. And that's the difficulty because it's so diverse engagement that we cannot say there is a one fits all. So therefore you have to do these steps with your partners, with your community, yeah? Most important thing, when you start measuring, create that feedback loop, create a way of sharing what you have learned and sharing the information. So not just sending out a survey and then not looking at the data, but really together look at the data and say, what does it tell us? How can we improve? Do, are we measuring the right things? Are we missing something? And also, again, those context factors. So what are factors that, that are influencing our success? So this is the four steps that you uh, can walk through together as a kind of guidance. The frameworks provide you ex provides examples of things that you could think of. And again, we have kind of tailored that for each of the patient community initiatives within Paradigm to create their own tailored framework and more information will be available soon. Uh, um, there's, for example, a blog from the ETG now since today live actually uh, on the Paradigm website where you can see how the ETG is started with monitoring and evaluation. And Eurodis, uh, with Eurodis, we are working on an article uh, on their strategy. And there's also something available from the um, Alzheimer Europe group. We have created a blog and we also shared what kind of things the Alzheimer Europe community find important to measure. And those things are slightly different perhaps from the rare disease community. So things to keep in mind. Lastly, I will just check if there are any questions now and I will hand it over to Sefki to show from a more pharmaceutical perspective, what may be important to measure. Um, but I will just first check in with you if there are any questions so far or anything you wanted us to focus on a bit more. Yeah, Robert? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking about the own, my trial that I'm working on at the moment and the, the finding an appropriate way of measuring what we're doing is proving to be a huge challenge um, because our trial is not to do with the medicine, but it's to do with the, uh, uh, a therapy. So mm -hmm. it's a little, so it's a little bit harder to find uh, measurement factors. But uh, one of the issues that we have is that we make a decision based on the involvement of the patient within the trial, uh, and we want to see what the impact of that is. But we don't know what it would have been like if we didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So how do you yeah. accommodate that situation? Very good question. So basically what we kind of used to, especially in the medicines development field, is that we're, there are also always a, called a so-called control group. Um, so a group that did not have the intervention or the specific drug mm -hmm. and a group that has. And that is uh, very common in evidence based medicine. So we are really used to that kind of thinking. But now if we apply that kind of thinking to a relationship, mm -hmm. how do you find a control group for your relationship? Imagine your, your relationship with your partner or with your family. How do you ever find a similar partnership or family in a similar situation? That is really difficult. So I think personally that we, that it's, the way we should think about evaluating patient engagement is not in the same way as we are evaluating drugs. So I don't know if we should spend that much time on finding a control group. 
But I think what you could do is look within that context of what are things that are important to measure and how can we follow that over time? So do we then see changes? What we have done, um, and perhaps the, the Eurorders Euro can talk a bit about that, um, there, there are multiple advisory boards. So they have the same method of engagement. They have also the same context, all in the rare disease fields. They all have the same support. It's all from your orders. So they follow kind of very similar guidance. And there you could possibly see if there are some differences and take that out as other groups. But again, it are totally different people involved. So yeah, I don't know if anyone wants to share his experiences with that from the Aurora side, for example. Is it something you find meaningful to have an, to control or to, sh to compare with another group? Anyone wants to share? I know from pharmaceutical companies that they often find it interesting. So in Aurora's case, we have seen that they want to see, they want to be compared to other companies. You know, how do we compare, do to compare to other companies? But it's very difficult to, to really um, compare the relationship. You, you Any thoughts? Can, or at least we've also seen, I think, in, 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 in several uh, pharmaceutical companies that they do compare trials. So they compare trials that are really fairly similar um and then in one trial they did involve patients in the design process and in the other they didn't and then they can see yeah based on certain on certain metrics they, they can see differences but that yeah that would require you know trials that are really the conditions should be really fairly similar to really make that evidence basically convincing or or and it doesn't mean that if you don't see a difference that the, the, the engagement wasn't useful so it's a bit difficult to interpret that data but but there are yeah there are companies that are doing that yeah I, i'm just finding it's it's very uh what you're describing is like an idealized world where you can have two separate trials that are running in parallel one that does the change and the other that doesn't and financially economically you can't do that because it becomes too unwieldy um so how do you this is all very not uh, hard numbers, but it's kind of very soft uh, information. It's qu really qualitative uh, information. And like the trial that we have is a small trial, like we have maybe 150 participants, you know, the team is only about four or five people. So we don't have that scope uh -huh. to do that, but we really want to measure whether, and I'm the patient that's involved, uh -huh. Uh, how do we measure the impact of what I am contributing to it? Um, but the problem is that we're, once I make the contribution, the timeline has changed or that the, the path of the study has changed. I, I, I just find it very yeah. hard to... If and what is impact? What is impact to yeah. you? What well, is impact the, to you? Impact for me is better quality of life for the patient, ultimately. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what it's all about. But th then we're talking about the, because we have no control group, we can't see if there's any better quality of life as a result of the trial. No. Because if I, if, so, so, so take a hard example. Um, what I, we did is we had uh, uh, the, pay, the participant information that they needed to, to be involved with the trial. So as a result of my input, we changed the, the way the manual was, the paper, the formatting of all that type of stuff. Yeah. That has all changed, but we don't have a control group where it isn't changed. And so we don't know whether that's going to make any difference ultimately to the quality of life of the patient because we don't have a control group to measure it against. But it is yeah. still, there's still an impact of patient involvement in it. So how do you measure it? Yeah, and that's a very difficult one, especially if you want to compare things. So I think one of the things is we may have to let go a little bit of that standard way of looking at evidence. And at the same time, we can also learn from how it can be done. So if you have changed the materials, uh, we have seen um, examples that have asked um, 
different groups to review uh, different patient groups eh? um, to review the patient the materials before and after for example mm -hmm. after the changes were made uh, if they found the materials more patient friendly so there are actually questionnaire questionnaires who, who measure the the materials provided in the clinical trial and and the quality of that but the, you're getting to the nitty-gritty kind of things you know and if your overall objective of course is quality of life that is a very long-term objective you know so it's a, it's kind of working backwards in that roadmap to see what are the things that come close to that uh, there are clinical trials uh, that are uh, measuring the patient experience in trials um, so th that may be a thing, uh, but then in, indeed to compare that, you would need a um, very similar setting. Yeah, so I, I don't think we can solve that problem entirely because it's also thinking about what is evidence actually and why do we do monitoring and evaluation? If it's indeed to prove something and to compare something, then you need it. But if it's to learn for yourself or for your community or to share what difference you have made, then you may not need it. Sally? I, was, I just have a, a comment. If you're measuring quality of life, would it not be possible to measure it before the start of the trial and then again afterwards and see how that had made a difference? The... the we are actually measuring where we have or is a it not life. that simple <laughs> it's, it, it, we have a quality of life measurement at the start of the trial and we will do that at the end for each participant but we uh, don't have a, a, a separate control group where we didn't we, we don't have the changes that have resulted as a result of the patient engagement in... I, I, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I don't think this is a particularly complicated trial. It's just no, but yeah. But but you, the, I, this is the challenge that I'm finding is how to find the correct the correct metrics or the correct method of measurement. Yeah. Of our activity, so that yeah. we can show whether there's a positive or negative impact in what we're doing okay there's Actually, aspects of I have, sorry go, go i i have the same problem i'm from the duchenne cab and we have made differences in a number of trials but we don't always know about whether what we've recommended has has been changed until maybe six months a year, sometimes longer afterwards, right? Um, so, and, and that's also something we're talking about measurements. What is this measurement? Because that's a sort of yes, no thing, right? Have you made a change or have you not? And uh, sometimes it might be so minimal that actually it doesn't make that much difference. And the other thing that um, I also struggle a bit with, except now it's slipped my memory. Mm. Crazy. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, we, we in the Duchenne community do have problems at the moment in particular because oh, I think about five different trials over the past two years or maybe even six have failed. Ones that we as the CAB have been involved in and given recommendations. And it makes you start to wonder, are we giving the correct recommendations or are we contributing uh -huh. to what we've been doing, which we thought or, or still feel basically is, is what the community wants, right? The needs of the patient. Is that contributing to these trials failing? So that's another uh, really difficult one to yeah. sort of think about. 
I'm glad we yeah, have. Yeah, and it's, it's never way. related to one factor. So there is never a really cause effect relationship of your input and the effect of trial. That would be really difficult. Yeah. But Sally, if a trial fails, you could look into the, the other factors, the context factors, the environment huh, that you are in that may uh, influence your success. But also, for example, the timing that you were, uh, were involved eh? and, and what kind of decisions you were involved in. Was it only the materials or was it also the research focus and relevance, the inclusion criteria, etc. So all those kind of factors um, are, I think, important to consider. So instead of uh, indeed, Robert, giving you an, an um, kind of set in stone way of evaluating your practice, which I, I understand can be a disappointment. We are giving you actually a map that enables you to measure a lot of different things that are related to each other to step by step see, are we at least on track? Now, you may not be able to measure really that ultimate outcome, not yet perhaps, uh, but to see are we on track to at least learn and adapt, but also, as Sally said, to see perhaps at some point you're getting frustrated, you know, you have been involved, you see that the trails, trials fail, like what can you do? And then to understand what are the factors that really are influencing to success and that do we have perhaps the right people at the table to change that factor or can we control that or not? So that is what the framework can help you with. Does that make sense? But it is a very difficult one. It's a yes. huge challenge. It's, it's a massive <laughs> challenge. And I can imagine, Sally, with your situation where you had those trials that didn't succeed, you, you look at yourself and say, well, is it us that's the, causing the problem? But it's really, really complicated. And I, I know there's so many different factors that play a role, but uh, you, I, I think we need to think about what kind of things have we changed and were those the wrong things? Should we have been, ch been changing other things, right? So it's, it does yeah. put a lot of responsibility on our shoulders, as well as the companies. Of course, they have to look and see what did they do wrong, right? Um, I don't know that, as, as you were saying, there are so many factors that can play a role, but you certainly need to sort of think about it and find ways to make failures less frequent in the future. We're yeah, and at least to ask that question is already a form of evaluation. Because if you ask that question, you can start exploring and you can start learning together. And, and, and I think that is, that is already can be very valuable. Hmm. But indeed, uh, it would be very hard to relate it directly back to your input. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we show Hi, you Lida. Hi, yeah? Lida, bye. Just wanted Hi. to add something. I think Robert and Sally were, were having very important points. Uh, I think also something we can definitely look at is the experience of the people participating at the trial. And I think it does says, as you are, Robert, perhaps we haven't changed the quality of life, but perhaps if because of your feedback, they might have a better experience in the pre-trial. You might have been able to ask the researchers to, to change some of the procedures to be more flexible or to perhaps add a phone call to participants at some point or to have a thank you card at the end and that change their, their, their experience. And that's something is possible to explore. So how did you feel when you receive a thank you card at the end of this trial? And was that important to you? And that might have made an important difference in that particular, it might be a small, but I think it's something really important uh, and I think sometimes we look at the big things like quality of life and failures and I think we can go step by step in the kind of smaller bits and perhaps all of this together contributes towards quality of life and somehow and we might be happy about it and even in the failure I think we can also explore how were the failures communicated to the, to the participants in the trial did they receive a letter which was easy to understand by the participants and were they frustrated about it and I think we can also also, by perhaps having a bit smaller aims or objectives or more reachable, I think sometimes it might be easier to track because we always, I think, pacing communities, we want to look at the final goals or the kind of big 
kind of seen, but I think we need to try to make a bit more closer to us. And I think there are so many within the two things you were uh, discussing. I think it's still a huge contribution you are you are making, and that's a lot of things that I'm sure patients in that trial will be able to tell you how was that important for them. So I think for that, that just to make that point, uh, Lida Vai. Very good point, Anna. Yeah, very good point indeed. Uh, we often focus on the long-term impacts, but that can be very far away, very difficult to measure. And indeed, with the framework, we also hope that it helps you to go step by step and to look at the things and that are also realistic eh? and stories like it doesn't have to be only quantitative it doesn't have to be only in numbers don't forget the power of stories like uh, the story that you can share that the pharmaceutical community can share like the impact you have made for them but you have learned them um, what what they have but they didn't know before they you started working together uh, and indeed, as Anna shared stories for, from patients or stories or how communication has been improved, etc. Hi, this is Irene. Just to add to that, I think we also can look beyond that one particular trial maybe that we're involved in. And, you know, if somebody had a good experience in this trial, they may be more likely to participate in a future trial. Yeah. So I think, you know, if, if we have this more long term perspective on the impact, that's also important. Yeah. And those are things you can also measure. Huh? So within your patient community, you can monitor the perceptions of patients for, um, regarding clinical trials and their willingness to continue or they to, to uh, be involved in a clinical trial uh, or the willingness from you as a partner or your partners to continue the collaboration. So those are all kind of indicators which also can be seen as success, because, uh, but we may not see them as the indicators. Yeah, good point, uh, Irene, yeah. Um, just looking at the time, Sefki, did you want to share a bit more from the pharmaceutical perspective, uh, from pharma perspective, like what kind of measurements they um, perhaps find important and also, um, yeah, in this case, how they have measured uh, efficiency? Because we see that a lot of measure metrics really relate to yeah, indeed, the trial itself and efficiency. Uh, but um, mm. yeah, as we just talked about, let's not forget about the other metrics. But perhaps this is an example of how one case uh, is trying to measure this. And it may relate a bit more to your example as well, Robert. Yeah, yes. should we do that? Yes, so to be clear, these are ex like these are mock-up cases here. So they're, not, or they're based on what we've seen in the different cases in Baratheon Paradigm, but this is not... Um, uh, full of something that actually happened. Uh, but it, yeah, we could give you an idea of what then is something for a, uh, for a pharma company, what they would like to measure and how we, they would organize a patient engagement initiative. Um, so we look at, uh, secondly, at the persona of Amanda. Uh, she works as a patient relations associate and uh, what she did within her company was to organize focus group discussions with caregivers of leukemia patients and she wanted to gain insights into their lived experience with the disease um, in order to inform the design and the protocol of a clinical trial. Um, and more specifically, they also asked the patients to review an informed consent form to see whether that uh, is understandable and provides all the information that they would like to have about the trial. Um, so what she expects from a monitoring evaluation is to provide her some more concrete actions on how to make evaluation possible. Um, and she also would like to be educated about what are often used metrics so as a measure within patient engagement. So also similar to Richard, she gathers a group of, of different stakeholders. Uh, can we go one slide back? Um, she gathers a group of different stakeholders and they determine together what the objectives would be of the, of the engagement activity and what their purpose for monitoring and evaluation would be. And also here it's important that they do this together because there are different perspectives on this. Uh, well, together they agreed that they would like to uh, optimize the consent process to reduce dropouts in the trial. They would like to improve the participant experience and that then also in order to increase the efficiency of the trials and reduce the time to markets for the medicine. They would like to do uh, monitoring and evaluation, uh, particularly for Amanda, because she would like to demonstrate effects on the on company performance. So if, whether there was a cost reduction in the trial, whether there was improved efficiency. Um, 
and they want to see how they can use their resources so the time and the money that they have available how they can use that optimally um but for patients that also participate in this initiative they want to see how is our input actually implemented like selling comments like sometimes it takes a long time you would like to know what what changes were made uh, so there are different reasons there um, and together similar to Richard they start developing a roadmap mapping out from from impact to uh, from input to impact what it is that they would like to achieve um, if you could go to the next slide yes can we not but, show the tool but show the metrics I'm not show sure the tool oh I'm so, just thinking about the time but we could um, well yeah what what is different in, from Richard's approach, uh, like Lido had just showed, he decided to explore the tool on his own. So look at all the metrics that are available. Um, but Amanda decides to go for the option to look at the sets. And these sets um, are four sets that align with a specific objective of patient engagement. So we have the improved alignment of product development with patient needs, improved efficiency, improved quality of evidence, and improved trust, transparency, and relationships. Um, and the metrics in these sets have been developed by the partners within Work Package 3. And they basically link together and comprehensively measure from input to impact for that specific objective. Um, so you could sort of see it as a restaurant menu where Richard decides to go for the, uh, uh, for the a la carte option. He gets to pick and choose from the whole menu what he would like to eat. Amanda goes more for the... Um, or the, the set menu, for example, the fish menu, or the menu of the day, or the vegetarian menu, where there's already a specific set of metrics that, or dishes, metrics that, that are ready for her, which she can um, then still tailor, of course, to her own needs. So she can still see, okay, maybe we'd like to add something, maybe we'd like to remove something, um, but it helps her as a starting point to, to get inspired on what to measure. So that's also the set, but I can really do it. Let's, let's uh, stick that for now. To go to the next slide, please. Uh, yeah, what I would like to show you here is that, that indeed the metrics and that they select align to their objectives. So under impact, you could see they measure study participant experience, like Anna just mentioned. Uh, you could, for example, do a survey uh, in, on, among the participants in the clinical trial. Um, they look at the dropout rate, the retention rate, uh, the trial completion rate, so how fast it complete. Um, but they also specifically added a metric um, that they found relevant because they added the metric patient understanding of the ex ex accessibility of the information material because they specifically focus on this initiative on informed consent process. She decides to measure money and time spent because she was interested in how to spend her resources. Um, so those are some examples of metrics that, that are basically tailored to what they would like to uh, know. Okay. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so that was the examples that we would like to show you. It's, we have a, a third example of a, a regulatory agency, but I think it's, it's quite similar. They just measure it at an organizational level to give you an idea of how that would work. But it's, it's a similar idea that they, measure, they develop their tailored set uh, that fits with what they would like to achieve. Um, so if we could go to the summary slide. Oh, yeah, so this is... Do you want to show what, like, the, what the difference is? Because this is more on an yeah. organizational level. Eh? Yeah, so um, this case looks at an organizational level. It means that there are various patient engagement activities that they would like to evaluate. So they're not looking at, for example, a photo focus group or an interview or a survey that they conducted or an advisory report, but they have various activities and they want to measure organization-wide what is the impact of this. And then you can see that, for example, the, 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 the metric method of gaining patient insight is then relevant for this purpose. Uh, but for example, also the one above, the number, type, and frequency of patient engagement could be a metric that is particularly relevant to measure at an organizational level. Yes. Yeah. And here we see also this willingness con to continue and the beliefs, etc. Those are things that are often, I think, me metrics that are often uh, we forget about more the organizational culture change me metrics. Eh? We are a lot of focused on the impact on research and actually that, that, uh, yeah. that may be okay, 
but we also try to change the way we do research. We are also in a movement together or creating a culture shift. Eh? So I think uh, as a patient community, we have to stay alert actually to, to not focus only on metrics related to research, but also to metrics that are related to the wider society and, and impact. And not just as patients, I think as a whole, right? Also for the researchers. Um, so yes, it's in summary, um, well, I think, I hope you agree with me and from the discussion I just heard, I think that monitoring and evaluation is, is incredibly important to help you learn and to help you also demonstrate the impacts of your collaborations, but it's also extremely complex. Um, this is because there's um, multiple, very different ideas of what an impact is, what is it that we're trying to reach, uh, but there's also so many factors that play that influence this process towards your impact that are really difficult to capture. Um, now, what we hope with this tool is that it, that it provides you uh, a structured guidance for then developing your own monitoring and evaluation framework uh, based on a roadmap of how you reach that impact and, and via selected metrics, these can be then measured qualitatively, quantitatively, um, various ways to look at it. Uh, but also, also do this together. So we also co-create this, this map of impact because that is also part of the reflection process um, that is so important if you're doing patient engagement and if you would like to learn. That um, thinking about this with all stakeholders involved, so both patients, uh, industry, regulators, um, can really help you also to, to measure what is meaningful to all. Um, so currently, uh, perhaps you have already had a look, but um, the framework is available on the Paradigm website in the, in the, in the toolbox. Uh, there it's still in Excel form, so as you can see here on the right, which is, yeah, as you can see, not particularly user friendly. It's, it's quite big, 87 metrics with the descriptions, um, uh, links between them. Uh, you can already scroll through them if you would like to get an ID, but uh, we're also developing this in the online tool that, that Lila just showed the prototype of, uh, but that's still a work in progress. Um, we have uh, submitted uh, the framework. Oh. To... <laughs> Sorry, this is not a presentation. Yeah. <laughs> we have submitted the, the framework to, uh, for, for publication in, uh, in a scientific journal in health expectations and um, it's under, currently under review, but hopefully will be available soon. And will then also, I think, be, be distributed by Paradigm. So yeah, thank as you. I, yeah, as I mentioned, we have the ETG, the blog from the ETG that's live yeah. today. So perhaps we can share that after this meeting as well. Um, and from Alzheimer Europe, we have also an article of what find important to measure. But indeed, I think from the discussion, I think the complexity shows that we really have to continue learning first of all tailoring this to your situation so i would be very happy if, if you just give it a try and share how you have created your own menu but we are also thinking about uh, creating some kind of capacity building and sharing community or initiative where we continue but where we bring people together to see what we can we learn and it can be from similar initiative but maybe not comparable in a way like control group comparable but it can still be um, facilitate actually learning to to see how have others measured things and also what have they seen as success so uh, i think um, that's something we could we are considering uh, after paradigm to see what we can do there um but i'm happy to hear from you yeah what you need and how you think you can continue after this especially those who have been involved in paradigm what are your next steps yes yeah, sally <laughs> uh what i i haven't been through the whole website so i'm i don't know about the, uh all the things on in the toolbox is there going to be a sort of um, I don't know, it, will it be a sort of click, click on thing that you can make your own document of what you want to measure? Will there be something like that? Because my problem in the past, which is why I still haven't done it for RCAP, is finding uh, the right framework to put all the uh, different 
things that you want to measure into. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea is that we develop an online version of this framework, literally as we as you've seen in the prototype yeah. today, where you can click to and create your own menu as you are in the restaurant. And then uh, it will also give you examples of questions and methods you could use. But then indeed, you still would need to decide yourself what kind of questions you're going to ask and how. So it's more as an inspiration. It will not be a one fits all. Here you have your survey go ahead because we have seen yeah. the complexity but indeed within the within the caps we have actually um, did some prioritization process so there are five uh, community advisory boards we're all working in the same context in the rare disease context with the same method and um, we have done some um, prioritization process where we kind of looked at what do all caps find important to measure so there are a few of metrics in the framework that actually can be measured by all initiatives. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start some kind of control or comparison, then it may be valuable to look at those more generic metrics. And that's something you can um, compare across gaps. But then also, if you ask, for example, questions from both perspectives, we have seen that as well in the caps, then you can also compare across groups. So, for example, do you see different results from an industry perspective? But it's more than about beliefs or about um, the usefulness of the meetings, etc. Hmm. And it can also help be helpful to, to aggregate the data. So if you have different caps that measure the same, you can uh, put those data together and basically make your, your evidence of how, how gaps are influencing trials stronger yeah. or more diverse, at least. Yeah. So there is some advantage in measuring the same thing, um, but our message is always first think yeah. what's important to you. Does it align? If you are not as Robert looking at patient facing materials, then don't measure something that's relate that relates to that, you know, but there are indeed some more generic things. And I think as a patient community, it could be strong as you measure some things all in, in different initiatives that could make in, indeed the case stronger as you can show them um, more impact perhaps. Yeah. Okay. So for the, for the caps uh, within Aurorius, I hope that you could continue with, uh, with that work. <laughs> and I hope that at some day we will see uh, perhaps a, a story or publication um, well, uh, yeah, and for the others, what about uh, about others? How do you plan to continue? Well, I, I know from my point of view, because I'm actually an embedded patient within the trial, it's not just a patient advisor group. Uh, I want to use this particular methodology for measuring what we're doing. Um, I have a talk coming up in a week and a half about positive things that have come from patient involvement but i'd love if this methodology can be successful for our trial in measuring uh, the contribution of patients within the study so and whether that makes any difference to the trial at the end of the day that's going to be very interesting but i'd love it if it was a if we were the first in our university or in Ireland that was using this, and then the people could say, ah, that's how it works. And I'd, and then they could use that. This is somebody who's done it. This is how this toolbox uh, not only improves the quality of the study that is being done, but the, the studies that follow on from it. So what I loved what you were saying there earlier was about if the participants in the trial will be involved in more research as a result of their positive experience with this trial. And that is a, a more societal impact. So I think that would be fantastic. Well, thank you. And thanks everyone for joining. I see we're reaching the end and I see a last uh, comment here from Mathieu in the chat box that there is a last uh, Q&A session uh, that will be held on November the 20th from three to four, which will be about community advisory boards, guidance and tools, but none more for practice, just for doing it, implementing. And also there will be, we'll talk a bit more about guidance for reporting and dissemination. So uh, I hope uh, that this was 
helpful and please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions if you want to share what you're doing with it and uh, i wish you all good luck with this um, difficult but interesting uh, endeavor of measurement i agree thanks okay thank you good luck everyone bye, bye everyone bye. thank you thank thanks you. a lot